Hello, this is Adam Stewart from stewartmedicine.com. I'm here today to show you a bunch of tools that I've built to help with the workflow and management of COPD. So right off the start, we have a fake patient chart here. And one of the things that might grab your attention is this toolbar that's popped up with a big red button that says, I have confirmed or updated the smoking status in the CPP. So this is a toolbar that we've built, or I built that um, at least once a year will pop up to remind us to, to, up, to confirm the patient's smoking status. Uh, if they're still smoking 20 cigarettes a day, or if they are, uh, maybe they've quit, or maybe they've reduced, or maybe they've increased. Um, so at least once a year, this will pop up if it's not done elsewhere. We're also using Ocean tablets to help automate this process, as well as in embedding little checkbox tools in our other encounter assistants like diabetes, for example. But anyone can check this, whether it's a, the doctor, the nurse practitioner, the nurse or staff. And if, the, if you're not even getting into the details of smoking cessation, just, just checking the status of the smoking, uh, patient smoking. So with one click, what happens is it actually inserts a custom vital down here that says at smoking status updated, done. And so the next time the patient chart is saved or refreshed, that toolbar goes away for another year. As I say, with Ocean Tablets, having the automatic tablet uh, questionnaires coming up in the background when patients are coming in, this really will automate the process as well. Um, so in our family health team, we have a, a COPD screening program as well, where we screen patients over the age of 40 who have a history of smoking. I won't get into all the details in this video on that, but the, the level one screening, what we call is, is basically the Canadian lung health test. And as you might know, any, any yes to the, any of these five questions, uh, spirometry is recommended. So let's say we, we refer this patient for spirometry whether it's in our own family health team or at the hospital. And say we're getting a, a report back. Here I'm going to enter a fake report. Um, I'm gonna make this yesterday just for example. Um, but normally the patient, the reports will be coming in through um, HRM or, or scan PDFs. But, so fake report. Let's say the FEV1 to FVC was 0 0.65 and the FEV1 uh, percent predicted was say 50%. And so, oops, made a little, oh, there it is, space between the comma. So let's say, so this report comes in. And what happens is you might have noticed this, another toolbar click uh, comes up. And I built this toolbar to be, it pops up if there's a, a pulmonary function test or spirometry test in the recent uh, days that we haven't yet tracked the, the vitals, the custom the vitals for uh, FEV1 percentage and FEV1 to FVC ratios. Uh, those ratios are not standard lab data or, or metrics in the EMR, so you have to make custom vitals to be able to track them. Which, which I've done. Uh, so the easiest way I found was, so this will pop up and trigger um, the clinician or the staff member even to, to input, to click that button and it inserts this tracking form. And from there, people can just kind of made this pretty intuitive. You enter those, the numbers in, the key numbers that we want to track and that will graph, this is formatted so it will graph these in a standardized uh, format and track them as custom vitals. As well, reversible or not reversible is a, is a common thing. And here I've also built a little checkbox that we can check off if we're doing the spirometry in-house for our own tracking purposes. And if we do, we can update the patient's height and weight, which we would have taken already. Um, or if it's not, if it's a hospital report, we just leave that unchecked. So what happens then, the next time the chart is refreshed, we see that that toolbar goes away again. Built a lot of these pop-up toolbars just to make uh, them very user intuitive and, and one click or two clicks here and there. So from this, we can see uh, that the, with an FEV1 one to FVC, re, FVC ratio less than 0.7, the patient technically has COPD. So we'll enter that in the pro, uh, problem list. Now, COPD is a pretty easy one to track in, in our EMRs because it, it's, it's a pretty unique string of letters. We don't really need to do the ICD coding behind it necessarily. You can build your reminders uh, and searches off COPD just, just in there. So what happens now is 
I built a toolbar for COPD that um, will pop up under, in certain, certain circumstances. Uh, one, I didn't want the, the toolbar to be popping up um, in every, all the time because we're getting a lot of toolbars and, and sometimes we don't need them in our face and taking up valuable screen real estate. So what happens is the next time the, the chart is refreshed, you'll see that this new toolbar, the, C, the COPD toolbar, has, is popping up. And uh, it's built, again, based on certain keywords in today's visit notes, whether it be you know cough, wheezy, shortness of breath, URTI, things like that, or whether there maybe is a spirometry report in the last month in the, in the chart, things like that I've, I've, I've made, um, made trigger the, the toolbar to pop up, but then go away at other times. So we'll walk through this a little bit here. And right off the bat, the, the title COPD is actually a clickable filter that filters out the word COPD. So we can, if there were notes or, or in, in, the, in the chart, they would actually be, uh, it would just filter at those, for example. Um, I'll come back to the COPD encounter system because that's, we're gonna walk through there. But you'll see it's also importing the last FEV1 ratio that's being brought in by um, the last custom vital. Uh, because again, we're making this in a trackable format. So we can see if we click on that button, it actually graphs it as well. So here we have a, an old maybe PFT tracking from 2011. And then here we have this one, 2019. So you can actually track FEV1 values with, with, this, with this tool. Um, this is a button that inserts this form. So with one click, it, it just has that at your fingertips too. If, if, there was, if you were getting a spirometry test or you wanted to track the vitals for another work reason and, and other than the, the way I just showed you with the one-click toolbar. Um, this flow sheet is, I built a flow sheet for COPD that has a lot of the, the, the significant values. Um, th again, this is a fake chart with not a lot of data in it, but things you can track and graph, you can graph from flow sheets too, just like we did there with one click, or you can track their oxygen levels. We're gonna get into these custom vitals that track uh, acute exacerbations and uh, whether or not they're an exacerbator, the last problem, uh, the last ER visits and the COPD uh, hospitalizations, CAT scores and boat scores and things like that. Point is it's all there uh, at a glance uh, for, those, um, for those who might need it. Now, COPD, are they, um, are they an exacerbator or not? Um, you know, that's, that's a common thing we, you might wanna classify because it changes the management, whether they should be on an inhaled car carical steroid or not, perhaps. So you can see it's, it's saying never done for both, uh, both the action plan and exacerbator, but I've made it pretty simple that you can click with one click, it pops up this. Uh, you can, uh, um, if you wanted to update that to a yes or a no at any point, uh, let's say they've had a flare, or let's say they, they haven't had a flare and they're not an exacerbator, so we, with one click we just click that. It, it stamps in this uh, custom vital sign there. And then the next time the chart is refreshed, you can see that it's updated to no. So you can see that out right at a glance. Um, the similarly, with action plans, self-action plans, does the patient have a self-action plan? With one click, it, I made a little pop-up that, and I made a few answers. Uh, yes, they do. No, they don't. Uh, yes, they do, and we even reviewed it today. Or uh, the patient is unable. Maybe they just don't have the capacity or skills to be able to self-manage, so so they're, not, they're unable to do so. So let's just say that no, they don't. So it's stamping the custom vital in there, and we're seeing that the next time the chart is updated, it comes back to, um, to there. Now, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm gonna pretend that those were done, I don't know, a year ago. And let's just say that that was done in the fall just because, just to mix up the dates a little bit, makes mix, mix it a little more realistic. Um, here, I'm gonna skip over to this section on filters. So this is a bunch of keywords. I find that often, instead of doing control three for keywords, I'm, 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 I'm often wanting to find spirometry or, or pulmonary function tests or eMERGE visits. So these are all just keyword filters. That filters out AECOPD, that filters out prednisone, that filters out the word spirometry. So you can already see we're, we're getting some notes that have to do with spirometry, obviously. Pulmonary function testing. ER visits, so emergency room reports. 
or in hospital discharges. So if there were any, these would be filtering those out quite easily. Along those lines, with COPD, there's a few things you want to be tracking, ideally, and that's maybe uh, uh, exacerbations, so EAE COPDs. Uh, so what I've built we've, as a stamp that if if you're seeing if the patient is in today for a cold and you actually diagnose them with an with a, an exacerbation, you can just click this, and it automatically stamps at AE COPD. Yes. Uh, similarly. Um, if you had an eMERGE visit report or a hospitalization, you could just be clicking that uh, if, if that corresponded. And the other thing is you can change those dates too. So let's say it was like last m month that, that, we, that, that it was actually an eMERGE visit that, that corresponded to. If you really, you don't have to do this because I think the dates are close enough, August 9th versus July for all intents and purposes. But if you really wanted to be type A like I am sometimes, you can you can change the date to correspond to the actual data in question. So uh, similarly, we'll see later, um, but the, there's another tool or ways to track this, but I'm, 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 I built it so that you can track ER visits. So if an ER visit came in for COPD, that you'd be able to click that off with one click and then document a, uh, that it was an eMERGE visit. So again, let's just say that was the July 1st visit as well. Um, or if they were actually hospitalized, you can click this. Um, let's say that was, I don't know, a couple years ago. So those custom vitals at eMERGE visit or at, at ER visit or at hospitalization, you'll notice that they're all defaulted to fill in with the reason COPD. But this same, I'm thinking the same type of format could carry forward with tracking reasons for vi admissions in ER visits such as CHF or, or other conditions you might want to be tracking, mental health, things like that. Um, so what I'm going to do for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to actually change this back to the CY in, in a little bit to a few years ago as well so that nothing is there. So, so let's say now I'm gonna move on to the uh, COPD encounter assistance. So whether it's uh, the nurse practitioner in our program seeing the patients for routine follow-up visits or, or initial education visits, um, or, or it's, it's, it's me seeing them for they're in for a cold or some other thing or reviewing their, their puffers. Um, this, this is an encounter system. We'll go through all the, all the details here, but you can track what type of visit it is right there. Um, this spirometry section, you'll see that it's automatically bringing in, this is the beauty of customized vitals and tracking, it's bringing in automatic data, the last spirometry or PFT, and the last FEV1 and the last ratio, whether it's reversible or not, all trackable. So it's bringing the false from there, for example. As well, we've got a quick link to the flow sheet if we wanted to, to, to bring that back up. I've made sections for chronic baseline symptoms um, that you versus acute symptoms. So now the beauty about encounter systems are if, is you're not going to get into these details today or it's not applicable. You just leave them blank and it won't spit that out in the final note. But let's just say this patient is you know, a chronic dry cough with no acute symptoms today. I also build encounter assistance with each section to have a free text area that, that allows for um, you know, free text thing for information that doesn't, additional details that don't fit into those nice uh, yes, no boxes types of things. Now, here we're getting in this, this exacerbations and hospitalization section is, is, is great because as I was just showing you with all the tracking that was going on, um, it's bringing in the dates of the last exacerbations based on the uh, AECOPD vital. You can see there, July 1st, so that's corresponding to there. Um, but it's also tracking, you know, the date of the last ER visit that we, uh, using the method I just showed you, and the last hospitalization. Are they an exacerbator? Well, no. And, uh, and then, and, but here we have, okay, well, they're, they're, uh, they've just had an exacerbation in the last 12 months, we realize, because we, we track that. So we might need to change the status now. So there's a couple ways you can do that. One is you could change it up here uh, with the one click here, change that to a yes. Or in this actual, um, I'll skip down here, in the assessment part, you can, you know, the exacerbator, yes or no, and that will flip the section, the, the, the um, custom vital to a yes as well. 
So I'll just flip that to a yes, and then we'll, we'll come back to that. So that's pretty helpful. Smoking status, it's bringing in it automatically. Here's that checkbox that I was telling you about earlier, that if we did update the smoking status and confirm that they are actually still smoking 20, or maybe we changed it and updated it today, uh, that, that, we're, that, that we're just documenting we did that and it's been updated for another year. If we want to get into smoking cessation, it allows for some more details here. Uh, number of cigarettes per day turned into a graphable vital that you can update that or, uh, or not. Um, it'll bring this section once you get going will actually start bringing in the defaulting to the what was answered the last time, um, and then you can update it or, or change it um, so you don't have to be always re-asking the same questions visit to visit. Vital signs and graphing all of them. Um, exam section again a free text area. Immunization statuses, let's say they declined the flu shot. So in this section, we get into some of the metrics that involve COPD. Uh, the CAT scan, or the CAT score, sorry, is, uh, um, uh, TELUS already has a custom form that's great. We try to rely on our ocean tablets as much as we can if patients can do them for both the MRC pre-COPD visit as well as the CAT scan, CAT screen to update that. But if they didn't, if they, or the patients can't use a, um, a tablet, they can fill it out on a PDF, for example, and or sorry, a paper, and right there bring it in. And, and this the scores can be quickly, with the click, you can insert this um, uh, custom form and click yes, it's going to automatically update it and create a note for you. And it's documented in the custom vital format at CAT 24. Um, so there's, or you could do that while the person was in front of you if, as well, but it, I find this, the, it's easier to get these types of questionnaires done at the start. Um, and then that becomes graphable as well, and it will pop into the flow sheet if you, if you click that too. The MRC breathless scale is a pretty quick one. It's only five. So the, again, the ocean tablet will do it in advance of the visit, or it's a quick one that you can kind of just go through on the spot with the patient. Uh, here you can click, and, and again, graphable MRC, it, uh, once this is done, it will actually start graphing that. It'll have a point to graph. Severity, if you want to get into that, like if you want to actually classify it, it's dependent on the FEV1, so you can click that. If we're going to get into BOAT scores, it's a little bit for those who have uh, or have those, um, like the six minute walk test to be able to do. This is a direct link that will open up the web browser to the BOAT score uh, uh, calculator. So right on the spot you can do that with one click. Uh, so at the end of that we we're going to do an assessment. Let's say they had a flare today that would actually track that or not. Uh, or we can just say yes their COPD is stable. Um, so the rest of this is in the management and plan section. So if you're going to get into education and self-action here are some options that you might commonly review. You know reviewing puffers, educated just regarding COPD. We have some custom forms for the self-action plan, both a black and white version and a color version, depending on what type of printer you have. And you'll see with one click, uh, you can go through that with the patient and print it out, and they can have it there. So let's say we did that today. Previously, we had, do they have a self-action plan up here? That was the last status that was back from, well, we just made, a, uh, made it October 2018 for the sake of demonstration. But here we're going to say, yeah, we updated it. We were, did that and we updated it today. And so when we're done this encounter system, it's going to update that as well. Smoking cessation, if you got into that, uh, we have, we can refer, I have a whole other demo video on the, the tools I built for our in-house family health team program referrals. Uh, check out that video if you haven't seen how it works. But uh, So I won't get into that today on this demo. Smoking cessation resources. I just have a quick default letter link to my to my website. So if I click this, it creates a letter that you can address to the patient. Just direct them to the website, and it directs them to the. There's some resources on there. So with again one click, I can either email that or print it out for the patient to have them some take home resources. Uh, if you need the patient needs X-ray or CT scan, and we've got our requisition pickers ready to go. So. If I needed to order a chest x-ray, I could click that from my Madoc site and click my any one of my x-rays to, to do. And that will bring up the requisition. Similarly with uh, pulmonary function tests, 
our spirometry, and there's the local recs, including our own in-house family health team program one. Here, this section is for favorite prescriptions. So let's say that at the end of this visit, we were going to prescribe them Ventolin, Spiriva, and equip them with amoxicillin um, and prednisone five day course as a self action plan. So with one click here, these are these are favorite prescriptions. So that when I click finish at the end in a second, I'll show you that that will auto fill all of those uh, prescriptions for for me. Uh, advanced care planning, some some options there, and you know follow up depending on on how you want to. Um, maybe they're seeing their specialist in October 2019, and maybe we want to see them ourselves in January 2020, for example. And then some any rough notes there too. So one of the things drawing your attention back to the prescriptions, uh, when I click finish, what's going to happen is. The prescription writer comes up and it has as default filled in all of the shortcuts for the prescriptions. So when I um, tab through, I just uh, I can you can change these too. Um, but if you tab through them, they'll default to whatever your favorite prescription was saved as. So with a few tabs, you've got all these kind of filled out. They can be faxed or printed. Um, if you're going to get in, you can change the details on it to say uh, you know or self-action plan, if that's the way you want to do it. But in any case, you can; those are all ready to go and they can be faxed or printed to the, to the chart. So there we have, now I'll show you here the, yes, we'll see that this has been updated, the reviewed uh, uh, status, the self-action plan as, as we talked about. Um, there's one other neat thing I wanted to show you, and that's this updater for that has to do with tracking eMERGE visits and hospitalizations. And it's not just to do with the COPD um, management necessarily. But let's go to, let's say we got in a, let's say it's another day, another week, and this patient we had a new Emerge note come in. It's important to note that emergency medicine uh, reports tend to come either as a consult or, or what's called a medical report. So I've got it built that it will track both of these. Let's say that it that this came in from a couple days ago, and ER visit, and then let's just say they actually there was a COPD visit there. So what happens here is I've got this other pop-up type of toolbar built, and it's really cool, I think, because it, it pops up if there's been an ER visit or a discharge summary uh, in the last little bit that we haven't tracked automatically. So you'll see this is popping up, and it's showing me the date of the last eMERGE report, uh, August the 6th, which is there. And let's, again, just as a little side note, let's say I want to be able to filter. I built, You can either use this filter or this filter here filters out just emergency room visits, so we can just see those. Uh, so if you've got a long chart, lots of information, this, this helps filter that down. Same with this one, the filter out discharge summaries. Now, I would have preferred to track ER visits and discharge summaries separately. However, HRM brings in, when an eMERGE report comes in, it often says discharge summary from the emergency department. So it's it, you kind of have to group them together, unfortunately. But I built this, so where this big red button is uh, is actually two button, two options, drawing your attention. It's another one of those one-click things. So I can see, okay, the, this is popping up and getting my attention. Oh, it must be an eMERGE visit or a discharge summary has come in that I haven't tracked. So I can see which is the most recent one. I click eMERGE visit. I see that, oh, okay, it was an eMERGE visit for COP and there was a flare. So by the way, I'm going to click that and just update that date as well. And, but more importantly here, I'm going to click ER visit and it's going to click, this is used for not just COPD, but all, all the hospitalizations, the eMERGE visits going forward. So I'm actually going to have to manually click in the reason there. Um, you know, if it was CHF, I would track that, for example. Now, what happens now is because this has been tracked, the next time the, the chart is actually refreshed, you can see that goes away. And I, I built, again, my 
uh, workflow I'm favoring is a lot of these pop-up toolbars that one or two clicks are there when you need them and disappear when and don't uh, don't take up space when you don't need them. So with that, that's a lot of information and tools, but I, I hope you find that useful and helpful and uh, enjoy.